Good morning and welcome to UK Gold, just part of the UK TV network. Now a look ahead at this morning's menu on UK Gold and it's business as usual at the Crossroads Motel soon. Then we head for a furious row between Paul and Christina in Neighbours at half past before catching up with the East Enders. There's our regular double bill at half eight, then we discover a cut diamond in Tyneside when the boat comes in an hour later. 10.30's party time for Rhoda, before war and peace break out in Dallas at 11. Swing in on UK Gold. If you think I'm going to fawn for some of the yobbos we get in here, oh, I'm actually sick. Oh. <laughs> You're a waste of space. Oh. The Garden of Tunctata. Why don't you talk properly? <laughs> that gives you just some idea of what's going on out there. Saturday night from 8 on UK Gold. Prepare yourself for Sunday night. I haven't been so excited since they introduced the American style siren. Oh, I'm waving a bra. Yeah. I've no desire to spend my evening scrubbing your roof vegetables. Oh, I think that would look rather vulgar. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Fancy a quick one. <laughs> Get a good glass of toilet roll. <laughs> Save us from these lunatics. With the double bill of the thin blue line, that Sunday evening on UK Gold. Now, UK Gold leads you through the holy portals of the Crossroads Motel, a soap classic. And you will just have to trust me, Nicola. Business is business, and my private life is a separate issue, and I know how to keep them in their places. What makes you so sure of that? Because I understand my own self-control. I would not allow emotion to colour my judgement, but if you are unhappy about that, then you have the final say. Yes, well, I am unhappy about it, Adam. It goes against all good management principles to have you in charge of your wife's new lover. Management should be capable of harnessing aggression and channeling it into positive impetus. That is a load of twaddle, Adam. Friction gets in the way of work. It's as simple as that. Anyway, I've told Jill that uh, I want Mickey to have a word with me. So let's see what he has to say about it, shall we? <sighs> Lorraine hummed, didn't he pick the tune up straight away? Jazzed up stylistics. It was fantastic. Oh. <laughs> Our very own Liberace. I bet you never thought you'd marry the star. Star? Mm, falling star, more like, or unemployed schoolmaster, one of the two. They're not closing down Oak Grove, are they? No, but Mr Hathaway, that's Stephen's headmaster, he doesn't think it fit and proper that a master should be seen performing in a bar. When did this happen, Mrs Fellows? Is it an official complaint? Yes, I'm afraid it is. He came round the house to see Stephen the other day. I'm, I'm very worried about it. Yes, well, I'm not surprised. Well, what does Stephen think about it? Oh. He thinks his private life's none of their business. Yeah, nevertheless, if Mr Hathaway chooses to make it his business, it could be very awkward for you. I know. He's not a very nice man, either. He's so pompous. Hmm. Yes, your husband introduced me to him the other night in the bar. Thought he seemed a bit preoccupied about something. Mm. Ah. So, I went to Spain the year before last. Oh, come on, mate. That's only Europe. I can't imagine ever wanting to go overseas. Still, I guess some people have got travelling in their blood, and some haven't. 
Well, I'd like to travel. I'd love to. Well, you won't with a wife and a business to look after, will you? No. You've got to have some security, though, haven't you? Well, at least I have. Nah, you've got plenty of time for all that stuff later on. You've got to travel now when you're young and free. <laughs> Except you're not free. Still, you've got to be happy. Otherwise, you wouldn't hang around, would you? Yeah, that's right. Suppose I'm happy enough. Good on you. So, where are you going next? You're going to keep travelling? Sure, I guess I'll move on. Why? Are you thinking of going with me? Yeah, I might. Oh, well, I'll let you know when I'm going. You're quite welcome to come along. But you wouldn't leave Anne Marie. Yeah, I could do. Hey, quick, before Di comes out, let's spin her a yarn. Hiya, Barry. I thought I heard the van. How's it all going? Di, I don't know how to tell you this. Tell me what? Oh, I can't. Oh, no, come on, what's the matter? Oh, look, Di, there's no furniture left. It's all gone. Gone? Gone where? Well, when we got to the flat this morning, it was empty. Cleaned out a lot. Gone. You were joking. Well, we, would we joke about a thing like that? Yeah, your landlady said that she sold it because you owed her some rent. My landlady? Mm. Since when has Dolly Dolman had a sex change late last night? Hey? I don't have a landlady, it's a landlord. I stop messing about. Get out of the way. You daft duck. Why am I supposed to know Dolly's a man's name? Stuff's in the back. I want us to have a place of our own. Look, we will have a place of our own, but just for now. Move in, just for the time being. In Adam's house? In Adam's shadow? I couldn't relax living here. Anyway, this isn't the kind of start I want for us. I want us to have a clean break. Well, I mean, what do you suggest? But why don't we rent a flat or a house of our own? This is my own. I mean, this is my house. It's nothing to do yeah, with Adam. Yeah, I know legally that the house belongs to you. But I still think of this place as yours and Adam's. You know, the house you lived in when you were married. I mean, if I moved in here, I'd just feel like a substitute for Adam. Oh. You only feel that because all these clothes and things are still here. I mean, once they've gone, you'll feel different. Why are you holding on to this place, Jill? I mean, come on, if we're going to have a fair chance, then you've got to cut off all ties with Adam. If I thought you were holding back, I couldn't fully trust you. Oh, darling. Well, come on, you've got to commit yourself. You can't hold on to this place as a way back in. Well, I'm not looking for a way back in. Look, I'll never go back to Adam, ever. <sighs> Look, you've made me so happy and, and fulfilled. I mean, I don't think I'd want anyone if I couldn't have you. Why do you doubt me? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't really doubt you, honest. Just I suppose I can't believe I found somebody so good. <laughs> scares me sometimes. Well... It's a new feeling for me. Me too. It hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> Sometimes it's more pain than pleasure. Did I tell you that I was a sadist? <laughs> I thought there was something funny about you. That's not all. <laughs> Look, we will have our own house. We will buy somewhere else. But it just takes time to find a... A buyer. You can't go on living at your parents' house. And look, I just can't sort of walk out of here. So, I mean, just for the time being, move in. Oh, darling, I want us to be together, always. Please. Yeah, all right. But I want all of Adam's stuff out of here, everything. Oh, he's... Being rather good about it, actually. He promised he'd have everything out in the next couple of days. Um, there's something else we ought to sort out as well. Yeah. Adam wants to talk to you about the job at the gym. What about it? Well, he still wants you to consider it. Oh, with, the, with him as manager? He's crazy. I could never work for him. Why not? I mean, it's the ideal job. Are you mad, Jill? Come on, I mean, he'd make my life hell. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. I told you, he's being really rather helpful. He'd rather see you with a job than without one. Oh, come off it. Why should Adam care what happens to me? He'd sooner see me dead. No, he wouldn't. Look, he's not like that. 
Anyway, they just want to get on with things. I mean, they need an instructor in the gym, and you are the ideal choice. I mean, that's all there is to it. People can be genuine, you know. Just put it on the chair, yeah. Oh, God. God. Damn. Stupid of you. What? Oh. Anybody for black tea with no sugar? Mm. I guess you're lucky it's not just a cup of hot water. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, fancy you. Come here. Help me move in. I can't even offer you a drink. No worries. I've got a few tinnies in the old Bertha wagon. Tinnies in the Bertha wagon? What does he mean? Tinnies. Can of beer. Oh. <laughs> he does come out with them, doesn't he, Barry? Yeah, well, at least he's got the right attitude. That's the main thing. Well, you're about the same from what I've heard. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Are you suggesting I'm a good time girl? Oh, no, not entirely. What I mean is, is that you've travelled, right? Met lots of people, gone to lots of places. Had a lot of jobs, you mean? Uh, yeah, I suppose so, yeah. I mean, you've enjoyed yourself, that's the main thing. Mm. Who's enjoyed themselves? Catch. Yeah. I have. So have I. Sorry they're warm, but uh, fridge is packed up and no ice in the esky. Ice in the esky, that must be Aborigines. No, it is beer. Cheers. 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 Mm. Oh, this is much better than your tea. Warm beer? Yuck. What I mean is, you're not afraid to do your own thing. Like moving in here, for instance. Us girls wouldn't want to do that, especially after what happened here. Well, that's silly, isn't it? Would you like to hear my philosophy on life, fellas? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've got to get out there and grab it while you can. Yeah, make its eyes water. Right, Great. kid, you've got to give it hell, otherwise it takes you for a sucker. What an amazing image. Hey, well, let's better get out of here before uh, she wants to practice on us, <laughs> huh? I'm on duty. Yeah, that's very funny, don't it? <laughs> Come on, I'm going to be late again, I can see that. Well, thanks very much for helping me, chaps. All right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Tra. Tra. Cheers. Should have found these in my drawer. Yes, it was uh, Jill's idea of a joke last Christmas. I'm sorry to disturb you. I didn't think there'd be anybody here. No, no, it's all right. I thought it would be best for everybody concerned if I moved to the motel. Did Jill tell you that? Yeah. Well, that's why I'm here, to shift my stuff. Look, I'll go to the pub. No, no, really. I wouldn't be long. I'll be out of here in no time. It's your home now. For some fresh drama. I slept with him. I went to kiss him. And then he did a runner. For some fresh talk. Liar! 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 I don't want to miss this show. For some fresh action. Let it all hang out. What brings you to the dating game? I like the second guy. I realized, wow. It's change of heart time. He's too conceited. She's always late. For a fresh look at life. Perfect but small. The living. Yeah. For a fresh new lineup, take a fresh look at living. Can your camera take three different picture sizes whenever you want? Is your film as easy to load as this? And are your favorite pictures as easy to find as this? Kodak Advantix cameras, a great way to take pictures and share pictures. From only $39.99. Well, it's crunch time in the toilet tissue department. Luxuriously padded quilted velvet like her next door. Or strokably smooth double velvet like my niece Edwina. A snappy decision. The quilted it is. I meant double. Double. And this time I'm unshakable. Quilted velvet, double velvet, there's toilet tissue and there's velvet. I want to be on television. Well, you can't. <laughs> Saturday night swing in on UK Gold. If you think I'm going to fawn to some of the yobbos, we get in here. Oh, it makes me sick. Oh! <laughs> You're a waste of space. Oh! The Garden of Tunctata. Why don't you talk properly? <laughs> that gives you just some idea of what's going on out there. Saturday night from 8 on UK Gold.
right. I think that's everything in the car. If you do find anything else, perhaps you could uh, bring it to the motel for me. Yeah, sure. Well, I could do with a beer. Oh, I'm sorry, that was the last one. Ah, oh, right. Something strong with that. You don't mind if I have a drink, do you? No, no. Sure, it, it is yours. Would you care to uh, join me in something stronger? A scotch? Yeah, yeah, thanks. I thought, Michael, it would be best if I moved out as soon as possible, because it can't be very nice for you to find bits of me all over the place, and you want somewhere to put your stuff as well. Thanks. No hard feelings about the other night, eh? No, no. Here's to our future, then. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. That is smooth. I got that in Hong Kong. Ah. Oh. Yes, of course, you remember. Please. I mean, do help yourself. Thanks. Did, uh, did Jill mention to you about the job at the gym? Yeah, she did say something. Well, I think we should discuss it. I don't see that there is any reason at all why you shouldn't take it, do you? Yeah, plenty. <laughs> well, then we must talk about it. Let me put my cards on the table. Far away. I don't know you very well. But I get the impression that you're the sort of professional guy who would not allow emotion to stand in his work, am I right? Yeah, I'm professional. Go on. We are both grown-up people. Adults. I don't see there is any reason why we shouldn't have a satisfactory working relationship. Come on. I'm going to join you in another. Thank you. They haven't managed to find a replacement yet. Big yes, sir? A replacement pianist. Ah, oh, no, the one we got's a cracker. You're looking for a job playing the piano, eh? No, no, I'm not a musician, young man. I'm a headmaster. Oh, I see, but you know somebody's looking for a job. I know, you've totally misunderstood me. I meant, are they having difficulty replacing the pianist? Replacing him? Nah, tonight's his night off. He'll be back again tomorrow. Will he now? Mr. Hathaway, isn't it? Oh, Mrs. Freeman! Oh, well, how very nice to see you again. Uh, do you mind if I join you for a drink? Not at all, dear lady, not at all. What I thought you were taking a funny route home. Oh, I won't be a minute, love. I just want to drop some stuff off for Di. Haven't you done enough running around after her today? Don't be such a miserable... Look, she didn't ask me. It's just a few essentials. She hasn't had time to do any shopping. Well, hurry up. I'm tired and I want to have a bar. Honestly, where is your milk of human kindness? Just get a move on, will you? I'm back. Oh, Adam. Yeah, let me take those. We've been having a drink. Can I get you one? No, thanks. I think I'd rather have a cup of tea. How long have you been here? About an hour. I've been make making room for Michael. Oh, good. Right. You two look as if you've been having a good time. Yes, yes we have, haven't we, Michael? Yeah, it's been good. Very productive. That is good. Jill, we've both been talking and we've agreed. There is absolutely no reason why Michael shouldn't take that job at the gym. Splendid. I am pleased. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be able to work together, you know, despite any other differences we might have. I knew it might all work out for the best. Thanks, Adam. So all that remains is for me to try and persuade Nicola. I'll, uh, I'll talk around tomorrow. I found it in the cellar, all covered in dust. Mm. It's probably vintage or something. <laughs> anyway, I wanted you to be the first person to drink a toast to my new home. Because mm. you deserve it. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. And by the way, thanks ever so much for bringing all those groceries. It was really nice of you. Oh, it was nothing. I mean, I could see you wouldn't have any time. No, still, it was a very nice thought, and I'm grateful. Mmm! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. It tastes like cabbage water. Oh. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. <laughs> 
No, I think you'd better let me pay for all these groceries. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. Look, um, it was only a few quid. I tell you what, have it as a moving-in present. Are you sure? Yeah, of course. Now, look, is there anything else you need a hand with while I'm um, here? No, no, I don't think there is. Oh, yes, there is one thing. Kindly follow me to the bedroom. Where is he? waiting in the van. She's in the van. Why didn't you ask her in? Not worth it. Well, you're going to be popular. She'll be all right, I tell you. Anyway, I'll, try, I'll, I'll see you later. All right. Well, thanks for all your help. No problem. Oh. Where the hell have you been? I'm freezing to death in here. Well, why didn't you come in, then? Oh, it's only a couple of minutes. Twenty, to be precise. Yes, there was an article in The Times about it the other day. Didn't you see it? No, I must have missed it. Ah, oh, well, it was saying that uh, music in schools is a dying subject. Children just don't want to study it, apparently, because they think it's a waste of time. That's why I think it's so far-sighted of you as headmaster to tackle these problems head-on. Well, yes, we, we do our best. Oh, yes, I can see that. You know, I was in here the other day and I overheard a couple of your sixth formers. They were listening to Mr. Fellows playing and they were saying what a pity it was they hadn't studied music at school. Really? Mm. And then I realised what a shrewd move it was of yours to allow your history master to play here in our bar. Because I must admit that at first, well, I was a little bit surprised. But then one sees the strategy. Awakening interest in a dying subject by making it relevant to everyday life. Well, it's very clever indeed. Well, I, I do encourage the masters I must to... say, I wish you'd been my headmaster. <laughs> That's very nice of you to say so. I encourage the masters to lead a full life. It's so much healthier for the boys to learn from masters who don't lead dull and isolated lives. Yes, absolutely. Um, look, if you're not doing anything this evening, why don't you join me in our restaurant for a meal? Oh, that's very kind As of you, but... a guest of the management, of course. How charming. Actually, it's rather a pity Stephen isn't here to play for us tonight. You're watching UK Gold with quite simply the best next. Chicken breast. <laughs>